In this question, we're told, given that f of x equals log of x, sketch on the same diagram the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals 2 thirds f of x plus 4. Label the coordinates of each point of intersection of each of the graphs with the x-axis. Indicate the behaviour of each of the graphs for large positive and negative values of y. First thing I'm going to do before I sketch anything is I'm just going to consider the behaviour of the function y equals 2 thirds f of x plus 4. So this is a combination of transformations. You can, see, can consider that we start off with f of x. We are then going to move on to the graph of f of x plus 4. And you're then going to move on to the graph of 2 thirds f of x plus 4. So this first, translate, first transformation is a translation because we're adding a value to our function. It's inside the bracket, so it's in the x direction. And because it's inside the bracket, it does a reverse of what it says, so minus four places. Okay, so that's the first transformation that we're looking to apply on our graph. Second transformation is a stretch because we're multiplying our function. It's outside the function, so it's gonna stretch. It's gonna be affecting our y values. So this is a stretch parallel to y-axis. With a scale factor, and because it's outside the bracket, and we're working on the uh, we're working on the y values, it does exactly what it says. So we're going to have a scale factor of two thirds. So let's sketch an axis for me to work on. Uh, usually, I wouldn't bother sketching the axis first, but since I've got to do it on the same axis, I will do in this case. The graph of log x. Uh, first, very small values of x tends towards the y-axis. So this y-axis acts as an asymptote, and then what happens is we come up, and then we cut through the x-axis, and we head off up to infinity. And so we have an x-intercept of y at x equals one. And so this is y equals f of x. So I'm going to consider my graphs now for the next one. Translation in x minus 4 places. So what that means is I'm going to shift this asymptote at y equals 0 to an asymptote at, at sorry, not at y equals 0, but x equals 0, and say change it to an asymptote at x. Oh no, this is the line y equals 4, sorry. Uh, I'm just being a bit silly, x equals minus 4. So I've translated now this asymptote from the y-axis four places to the left to the line x equals minus four. This point of intersection, this is also going to translate four places to the left. I'm not gonna mark that on yet, I'm just gonna draw the graph and then mark where it hits. So that deals with the translation. And then I have to demonstrate this stretch of scale factor two thirds. Now, unfortunately, there are no y coordinates that this directly affects. So what I have to do is I have to demonstrate somehow that this graph has a gradient shallower than this initial graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch up from my y acetate and I come across, and I'm just going to come across at a small angle and do something like that to show that actually it's going to come and that these two graphs are going to intersect at one point. So this is now the graph y equals two thirds, f of x plus four. And I just must remember at this point to mark on that this is the point x equals minus three. Okay then, so let's have a look and see how the marks are awarded in this question. Okay, so two marks for f, y equals f of x. It needs to have an asymptote at y equals at x equals zero, so the y-axis. So let's do it b1, and it must also have the point of intersection at x equals one. This can these marks can only be given if the shape is correct for that graph. Next. Again, the shape of this graph for the second function must be correct. You then need to show that x is minus four is a asymptote for this graph. We know to need to show that, uh, that the graphs, that the second graph cuts the x-axis minus three. That is also a standalone mark. And we must somehow show that the graph of 
y equals f of x is steeper than y equals 2 thirds f of x plus 4. So at that point, we can show that we get a standalone mark. Okay, well, I hope my solution made sense to you and that you followed how to mark it.